Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to Postscript. I'm Luann Riley, Grow Group Director, and I'm here with Pastor Dan, and he just brought the Father's Day message. Welcome, Pastor Dan. Hi. Hi, and happy Father's Day Thank to you. you. Thank you. What a great message we heard today. Um, very challenging and a, and a look at three questions I think a lot of people ask themselves as parents or even if not as parents. Um, but as I sat there today thinking, um, I know that there's people there who this is not a happy day for them. It's right. not a day that they celebrate or even brings a lot of happy feelings for them. Um, I can think of first people whose fathers who've been absent, which you talked about that, but mm -hmm. people who've been hurt by their father. Right. Um, where's, where's the hope for them today? Well, uh, let me say, f first of all, that um, I agree and understand that, yes, for some people, this is a very hard day uh, because their relationship with their father was either non-existent or it was uh, a bad relationship for a variety of reasons. Um, I think a starting place, it's not the resolution, but a starting place is to... Uh, first of all, um, acknowledge, yes, this was a reality in my life, but uh, it's in the past now. Uh, I, I don't have to live that or relive that every day. There is a freedom that comes in Christ to move forward. Mm. Uh, part of the moving forward process is forgiveness. And I understand that every situation is different and in some Forgiveness comes easily, and for others, it may take a lifetime, but ultimately, that is the goal, to find forgiveness in our hearts. I think it's very difficult to move forward about any situation, but certainly about our significant relationships if we have not been able to forgive. Uh, a third thought that comes to mind is uh, turning our vision toward the future and choosing to learn from those things and determining how you will be different. Mm. Uh, we don't have to be prisoner to our past. We don't have to repeat the same mistakes that our parents made. And of course, all parents make mistakes. Uh, some just make worse ones than others. But we can be set free to set a new course for our children's lives and hopefully find some peace and comfort in that. Those are the three thoughts that come to mind right away. Those are good. Um, I know as you speak to a room that's full of different generations, mm -hmm. um, just thinking about the father who's sitting there thinking, man, I really screwed this up. I oh. just personally didn't do these things that you're talking about. I wish I had heard this message 20 years ago, sure. but I didn't. And so now I have either children who are gone or adult children. Um, what would you say to, to them on Father's Day? Well, um, in a similar vein to the first uh, question, the, the first thing that has to happen is an acknowledgement that, yeah, I... I did blow it, you know, uh, own, take responsibility for that. And then moving forward, if it is possible, and I know in some cases it's not, but if it's possible, begin a conversation with your child where you let them know mm. that you know you blew it. Uh, begin the process of seeking their forgiveness and expressing your sorrow over what happened, expressing your desire for whatever years remain in, in whatever context the relationship is now to be a, a better parent. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's important to give your child an opportunity to say what they need to say because chances are good in most situations there's been a lot of unsaid stuff that has built up and built up and uh, they need the freedom to get that mm -hmm. out. And I can't think of a, a more appropriate person to say it to than the one who was behind a lot of their, their pain. That won't be easy. It'll probably be a very, very painful experience. But um, 
healing in the, these kinds of things n n never is pain-free. It, it never is easy. Uh, when pain has been inflicted, often the only way to get back out of it is to go through some more pain. It's just pain of a different stripe. Um, in the event that that sort of communication is not possible, say the child has just totally cut off all contact, I think the next step for that person is to bear their soul before God mm. and make things right with Him and uh, continue to petition Him for the possibility of making it right with your child one day, but at a minimum, uh, getting your life squared away before the Lord and uh, letting Him do the, the work of healing and restoration that only He can do. That's a good word. Um, you did mention at the end, I'm thinking of another you know, set of gentlemen who could have been in the room today of those who don't have children yet mm -hmm. um, or never had children and don't have them in their lives right now. Um, and so you sort of put out a challenge of become a mentor or find, um, there's so many widows mm -hmm. or um, single, moms. Cute, single moms in our church. How, if, if I was sitting there today and that stirred in me that, I, yes, that's something I want to do to help, where, do, where would I go to get connected to that or to find someone that I could be involved to serve that way? Okay, well, I can think of three different avenues. Uh, the, the first would be really just open your eyes and look around. You don't have to look far. <laughs> Uh, our society is not a mom and a dad and mm -hmm. 2.5 kids anymore. It's often broken. And so you, you probably just need to pay attention. Beyond that, though, if your very best paying attention efforts aren't paying off, uh, Bridging for Tomorrow, our nonprofit ministry with Title I schools, there is no lack of opportunity there, none. Uh, there are single moms in abundance mm. down there and uh, lots and lots of children who need a positive influence. And that ministry lends itself to that through our mentoring program. And I know that uh, Maria Mafla and her team would love to have mm -hmm. as many mentors as, as possible. Um, a third avenue, I think, would be uh, word of mouth. Start asking. Mm -hmm. If you don't know of someone, well, ask someone that you think might, mm -hmm. um, who perhaps maybe runs in circles uh, with younger moms or, or, or single even moms. Or in, in the grow groups. Even yeah, in your grow yeah groups. take advantage of your grow groups. we have lots group. of grow groups that have single sure, moms. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, uh, that is a situation where uh, there's there's got to be a very slow movement towards a relationship. No, no single mom, of course, is just going to hand her child over. Mm -hmm. But uh, taking the necessary slow steps and the necessary precautions to make sure that everyone's good with the relationship and that it's a safe relationship, um, I don't think it'll take a whole lot of effort mm -hmm. to, to find somebody. Great. Great message today. Thank you. And thank you for um, just the encouragement for every dad or gentleman that was listening today. Sure. Thank you. And thank you for joining us here for Postscript. We'll see you back here next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.